Yes, I hope most of you managed to grab your coffee and nice to see all of you again <laughs> after the break. So, like mentioned, my name is Hanna Nimkertz. I work at Forum Virum Helsinki, leading our IoT, Internet of Everything program. And, and we were invited to come and share with you a little bit the work we've done on, on the innovation platform, making the most functional city, the city of Helsinki, a platform for third-party service development and especially focus on 5G and the work we've done in Urban Sense project. So I didn't have a, enough time in the, in the panel to share with you the work we do, so we are co-creating Urban Futures. And we have kind of twofold uh, strategic mission. On the other hand, we are helping the city itself to utilize and leverage new technologies. And then on the other hand, we work hard to make the city as good of a platform for third parties, companies like yourself, for research institutions to come and uh, pilot and develop their uh, urban services on top of the city platform. And uh, some numbers, uh, we've been doing quite impactful uh, work on this domain. So uh, we have around 2,000 residents engaged in different kind of pilots so that they are shaping the future of smart cities together with us and the companies that are piloting their services. Then on the other hand, we have around 170 uh, European universities and research institutions working on these challenges together with us. Uh, we work with around 60 European cities directly in, in different EU-funded projects, and of course we work, like mentioned a bit in the panel, uh, also outside the direct project work in, in, uh, with hundreds of, of cities through networks like Open and Agile Smart Cities and the EuroCities network. And uh, currently we've had around 750 businesses piloting together with us. What this has resulted in, uh, we've been, for example, bringing the robot buses uh, to the streets of Helsinki, and we have been actually advancing with robot buses step by step, and currently we are busy with procuring uh, a fleet management system for robot, a fleet of robot buses. So shifting from individual lines and testing how the uh, bus, a robot bus works there, we actually look at it as how can we integrate such uh, bus fleet into the city's normal public transit operations. Uh, there's other kind of this, uh, scalable mobility-related solutions that we've been working on as well, varying from drones and last-mile logistics to different kind of behavior chains and, and getting people uh, to do that shift that is required for the city to be carbon neutral by 2035. On the building side, uh, we've been working on shared smart spaces, for example, uh, providing uh, API and data about the existing uh, resources and, and, and spaces that are available in the city and, and enabling companies build services where they can start actually booking, booking this, this kind of available resource through, through the, their own services. And in Kalasatama, there's the smart grid, uh, and it's been very uh, catching together with, uh, with its uh, waste management system a lot of interest, uh, so we have a lot of innovation tourists coming across the globe to see how the city of Helsinki is advancing as a, as a smart city. On the, on the IoT data and AI side, uh, we've been moving, like I mentioned in the panel, from opening up data, learning what it means to be a platform, to actually starting our developer relationship through the Helsinki Loves Developers program, and now we are going more and more deeper into uh, sorting out and, and solving the challenges that we have regarding having uh, real-time uh, high enough quality data about city, about the buildings, about the vehicles, about the way uh, people flows uh, are uh, moving in the, in the city. And uh, some of the benefits we've been working hard on the, on the digital single market for these solutions, so uh, focusing on interoperability, harmonizing data and APIs. And we just finalized a, a joint project together with various cities where we were able to bring to Helsinki four of these scale-up IoT solutions that also other cities implemented. So we really were testing the how interoperable, how easy it is to actually scale service from one city to another. 
And we've been getting quite uh, good results also on energy cuts by bringing uh, sensors or, or um, smart thermostats to retrofi or retrofitting old buildings with these solutions and helping them to cut down their energy consumption there. We have in my team a quite large portfolio uh, that enables us to work on these topics a bit in a more longer term as well. And uh, this is kind of the work, I just quickly go through the work we've done so far on this side. So like I mentioned, we started by bringing ease into using open data. Uh, we started uh, supporting uh, data driven business, uh, companies utilizing data, making business out of that. Then we uh, switched more to the IoT solutions, also harmonizing the data input, so the southbound API, so that you can more easily uh, procure just a good smart sensor solution instead of just the whole, uh, buying the whole stack from the provider. And we also started working on the data platform side of things from Select for Cities pre-commercial procurement. So actually uh, working together with the market and the offering to shape uh, the landscape and the offering there so that cities can have these solutions for managing the data, for collecting data and also sharing and using the data. So different kind of dashboards uh, and other widgets on top of the data. And now coming more to the topic that I will share some of the lessons learned from with you today. So the connectivity has become more on the agenda, of course, through IoT. So how do we actually transfer the data there? And I will be talking a bit about the 5G side of things, but we've been also uh, running quite a few pilots with LoRa. And we actually, if there are interested uh, parties here, we can provide you uh, LoRa connectivity thanks to our uh, collaborators for uh, proof of concepts, for example, if you want to test something in the smart building sphere. And the next focus will be more on the AI and, and the consent management for personal data as well, so these two aspects. So AI has brought us completely different kind of needs regarding this data. All of a sudden, we don't have to focus so much on APIs and thinking how the data is packaged as well as possible, but we actually have to make sure that the raw data without anybody <laughs> messing with it is, is available for the algorithms to start learning from them so that there are no preset biases coming from, from our analysis or our, our corrections there. So now more to the connectivity, like promised and the topic of this discussion. We really felt that uh, it's something that a uh, lot of small companies especially still need uh, kind of uh, more awareness raising about as well as uh, support and, and kind of skill development on their side. And that's uh, why we've combined uh, forces together with the Helsinki University and the city of Helsinki on Urban Sense project. And I will share some of the lessons learned from the from that project so far was also the results of the very recent innovation challenge that we ran for companies. So the idea was that uh, even though there's no commercial offering, uh, we started this project to make sure that companies could as easy as, as early on as possible start realizing what are the actual uh, benefits uh, and changes that 5G can bring to their operations. And uh, in general that they would we, we didn't really target any specific kind of companies, more to actually make, create this awareness in all companies that can benefit from 5G, and I guess it's almost, I don't think there are any companies that couldn't. So the whole increased uh, data transfer capacity, the minimal delays, uh, reliable connections, uh, the potential to have a lot uh, vaster uh, fleet of uh, devices, uh, and then the whole uh, battery side of things by reducing their energy consumption. So quite many companies, whether they are in entertainment, in the manufacturing or, or in smart city solutions, they can all benefit from, from at least one of the aspects here. So the main objectives were uh, the University of Helsinki was building their own uh, 5G test network in Kumpula so that their students as well as these companies that are engaged in, in this uh, project could benefit from and, and get started, get more hands-on with 5G, and they could also uh, do research on this technology. Uh, then the city and uh, Forum Virium together uh, wanted to establish this open uh, innovation platform on top of 5G, so that it would really be as, as low threshold as possible for companies to get, get started with pilots. 
and it's partly, of course, supported through funding, which I will be telling a little bit more about soon. And then the whole business ecosystem engagement was uh, very much of in, on our table at Forum Virio. So we decided that we will run uh, three different uh, thematic experimental rounds for these trials, pilot rounds, uh, and then uh, have a more open innovation challenge. And uh, the topics we chose were the massive IoT, which is one of the kind of key promises uh, for, for 5G. Then on the other hand, the augmented and virtual reality uh, solutions and uh, the benefits that 5G offers to them. And then as a third one, the edge computing. And uh, the two the, uh, first ones have already uh, been uh, the, so chosen, the companies and the edge computing will uh, come then a bit later. And then we uh, had the innovation challenge, which uh, winners I will be announcing here today. So for the massive IoT, uh, we actually chose this uh, Starlit 5G, which is about getting uh, more accurate data in real time from uh, the maintenance vehicles in the cities. And there the partners were Luke, so this natural resource uh, center, uh, Vapis, uh, EE Innovations, and Stara, the maintenance unit in, in Helsinki. And that's the ongoing now, the experimentation there. Then for the AR VR, we chose Helsinki Ayassa, uh, which is bringing the historical photos from the uh, open uh, cultural resources from the city's uh, museum and helping people to actually explore these different historical layers of urban life and urban structure with this real life photos and video footage. And uh, there we chose the tea time research to do this, it was their concept. And that's also ongoing. For the 5G edge part, we are still uh, now doing a feasibility study that will there be enough uh, companies that could actually offer these solutions yet. So we are a bit waiting for the, for the things to match, get more mature. But then for the innovation challenge. So uh, we were looking for solutions to promote smart services in the city of Helsinki. Uh, you could get 8,000 euros for running the pilot uh, or the trial program. And we focused uh, on three different aspects. One was the sensor data, because uh, the city, even though it's a big op op organization and has uh, operations across the city, has even uh, open, uh, owns a lot of buildings and infrastructure in the city, it cannot uh, produce all the needed data for the future services. So we uh, challenged the companies to come up with the a uh, way that we could crowdsource some of this valuable data from the citizens. Uh, then there was more uh, broader uh, urban 5G service. And then the last one was really leaving it to uh, room for creation, such as your own 5G concept. And uh, here are the winners. So for the sensor data with crowdsourcing, uh, we've chose actually uh, paired up two companies. So Visense and City Nomadi. Uh, were chosen to collaborate on uh, collecting uh, air quality data and then visualizing it on the, on the app. For the urban 5G, uh, we actually chose this augmented reality positioning outdoors and it allows, it combines 5G and uh, AR solutions and utilizes the Helsinki's very uh, I recommend to all of you, if you haven't checked it, the 3D model, the semantic 3D model that the city of Helsinki offers. And it at least promises to utilize edge computing there as well. And then for the last one, uh, we actually, uh, it touches the crowdsourcing topic as well. It's from Loopshore, and uh, they will bring these uh, air quality sensor kits to libraries so that citizens can actually go and borrow them. And uh, they also maintenance, the, uh, they uh, have a maintenance flow for these sensors because some of these sensors, uh, they, they are these low cost sensors, so the, the data quality doesn't stay that good for a long time, so you have to recalibrate them and so forth. So they have a solution for that. And uh, it's, of course, not just these are just small trials where we are trying to kind of, both the city wants to learn about it and, and the companies want to learn about this new technology. But city is, of course, on its own also working and, and uh, creating enablers for 5G deployments. So uh, it, to ensure that we will have 5G connectivity in the city, the city has worked on these common policies for 
cooperative network construction, because otherwise the whole city would be a, a construction site uh, if everybody starts digging at different times of the operators, so they want to make that pro process as smooth as possible uh, to kind of uh, create idea about how this 5G will impact the city. They had a 5G base station competition, and they had a project uh, with the, some of the other largest cities in Finland to kind of anal make an analysis of what the 5G, what will be the impacts, what will be the benefits for the city, and that's called 5G Kiri. It uh, was uh, finalized in, uh, in, the, in the spring, I believe. We don't want to do things just in Helsinki, so I believe most businesses <laughs> don't want that either. So, like I mentioned there earlier, we've been working on interoperability a lot, uh, especially regarding data and APIs, but more and more also about processes, how city is dealing with these third-party solutions. One great opportunity for us to put that really into action is a smart city center of excellence uh, that uh, will start in the end of this year together with Tallinn. And uh, it's a good moment to put this interoperability into test because there's a huge amount of people tra traveling and working in these two cities, and uh, that's why it would be very good if our services would scale and if the data would be in a similar format. And uh, 5G is, is there as well as an, one of the enablers, and I guess what makes it interesting uh, here <laughs> into this context is that uh, of the different uh, research streams and, and innovation tracks we will have, there's the uh, built environment and energy are, are there as one of the key focus areas, so if you're interested in uh, finding opportunities to test your solutions, scale them to Tallinn and so forth, please contact us and we will see how we can help you. There will be upcoming funding calls for companies there as well. And in the end, uh, I promised to talk a bit about the opportunities that we have coming up because, of course, these contests and innovation challenges I talked about were already closed, so not so nice to talk about that to the companies when you can't partake anymore, but there will be opportunities coming up. Uh, we will have an urban uh, innovative action project, HOPE, where we'll be procuring uh, air quality interventions, so uh, solutions that will either uh, help us to keep the air quality in a good, good level or uh, help us to decrease the exposure to bad air quality of people. And there can be a variety of, of activities, and they can be more built infrastructure related as well, so keep that in mind. That's coming in next year. Uh, we will have an AI uh, project, AI for EU, where we are working on an on a EU-level AI platform together with uh, 80 partners and, and the top research institutions and uh, many large companies in, in Europe. Uh, they will also open a call for AI solutions. And uh, even if you're not an AI company yourself, maybe you can uh, pair up with one and, and uh, provide a life-changing future solution there. Another AI project, uh, we will start our AI for cities. Uh, we will start a market consultation there. And there again, we are looking for solutions where AI is helping us to cut down CO2 emissions and on the domains of... of uh, energy and mobility, but of course here the energy doesn't mean just energy systems, but how energy is being consumed in, in buildings and in the smart city infrastructure. So I would believe that there are many companies here who are uh, on top of this uh, game. And then we have a lot of smaller, these 8,000 euro and so forth challenges coming up. And all these, if you're interested, stay tuned, go to this website and, and the page on our website so you, you won't miss them, and follow us in, on Twitter. So we are aiming for cities where data, uh, whether it's open, closed, or, or, uh, or my data, that it can bring really value for society, a little bit like we talked in the panel as well. And for this, uh, to achieve this, we are collaborating with the city, with companies like yourselves, with the scientific community and citizens. And we really want to make it easier for all of you to utilize uh, Helsinki as a platform and come and pilot your solutions here. So if I can help you in any way, please come and have a chat with me later here today. Thank you.